You also need to be comfortable. What's great about this profession is being able to get up in front of people, people in it. That's the key thing is making. People want to be seen and they want to be heard and they want to know that you mm -hmm. are acknowledge them. And that's the biggest thing. Well, and I walked into a wedding ceremony at a chapel uh, several a few years ago and the, the woman said, oh my God, I was supposed to have a male minister and I was the only one on at night that night. I said, and change it to tomorrow or we can perform the wedding ceremony. So I did. She hugged yeah. me later on and thanked me. She was, it was the best ceremony I never thought. To go out and market yourself to different venues that you know where they're doing wedding ceremonies and also letting other people know in the business world. All right, welcome Maria to the show, to Hustle and Beyond. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, for the listeners, our guest today is Maria Romano, who has done over 5,000 weddings as a wedding officiant. And she's a true believer in love, passionate about love. And I'm very thrilled to talk with her today about how she came to be a wedding officiant and officiant, and also what we can learn from her in regards to side hustles and projects on the side and kicking them off to make a real business out of them. So welcome, Maria. Well, thank you, Franzi. How's the uh, weather back there? <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> It's hot yeah. too in Vegas. Oh my gosh, like 108. So let me tell you. Okay. We got to send some cool weather both our ways. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. People have been complaining a little bit about not getting the best sleep, but um, hopefully we can manage and keep our minds <laughs> sharp for the remainder of the recording. Fantastic. Yeah. So to um, jump in, um, actually, I at first was, when I first um, came across you and I was hearing the word wedding officiant. I was like, what is a wedding, wedding officiant actually? So maybe for the audience, you can explain a little bit. Um, yeah, what it is, uh, that you do, what the processes are that go into being a wedding, uh, officiant, maybe what you need to prepare. So just to get an understanding of the job. Well, right. Most people, they might have heard of the term celebrant, wedding mm -hmm. officiant, minister. Those are different terms that are used um, in order to officiate wedding ceremonies. And that's what it is. That's the profession. Licensing is required in order to become a wedding officiant in most countries or states, I should say. But what's great about Las Vegas and why it's so unique and why I've been so fortunate to have done over 5,000 weddings is we're the wedding capital of the world. So <laughs> we have an up right. We do about 85,000 wedding ceremonies a year here in Las Vegas. So I'm blessed well. to be able to get a portion of that. But, you know, being a wedding officiant, you know, it's something people just, when they hear that word, like, ha, huh, ha, huh, what are you, a minister? What are you, you're not a priest? <laughs> I laugh. And no, because basically... Anybody can become a wedding officiant or a celebrant. It depends upon the term that you'd like to use. And with that said, you, um, depending upon where you live, you just research the licensing requirements. Like I said, here in the States, we're probably the strictest because we require that you have a background check because it's a business here, mm -hmm. as well as having, a, we used to be able, we used to have to have an affiliation with the religious organization, but they finally mm, moved past okay. that because some people are atheists. They don't believe in a, yeah. why do they want to have somebody that's, you know, associated with a religious organization, marry them? So now you don't have to have that affiliation. I do. I'm, my title is Reverend, but it's not necessary anymore. And what's beautiful about the profession, at least in the United States, is you can move from state to state. And some of the states will recognize your officiant's license from other states. Mm -hmm. So really, you don't need to have a lot of licensing done. And if you're a notary, so if anybody's a notary where you're notarizing somebody's signatures, like if you have to have property done or wills done in your notary, most states, with the exception of four in the United States, 
automatically, if you're a notary, you're a wedding officiant. You can perform Interesting. So it's great. It's great. But it's been a fun, fun profession. I started in 2013 and I love, excuse me, 2010. And I loved it. Loved it. Wow. Fantastic. And so you just mentioned um, background check there um, and uh, licensing. So how easy or difficult is it to get that uh, certificate, so to say, and uh, what goes into actually getting that certificate? Well, for this, for example, in Nevada, they require a background check. Mm -hmm. Other states might be different, meaning that you can't have a felony against you. You can have been in jail, yeah. arrested, you know, something to that effect. Uh, and then the licensing, it just depends upon every state is so different. So for me, okay. it was easy, but every state is different. Every country is different. Okay. So it's almost just like registering a business. You don't need to take well, like yeah, a right. it, course or how, test or right, something. Exactly. <laughs> Well, no. Now in Nevada, in Las Vegas, you have to take a test when you get your license. They put you through going through what the paperwork is all about. And even though it's not extensive, mm -hmm. they want you to be aware of the legalities because it's legal. It's a legal document. You're marrying people. Yeah. You know, yeah. that affects their assets, right? It affects what's going on legally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's important. Mm -hmm. So talking about uh, documents and all that, so what is a process uh, about the, of the work that you do? So let's say a couple is coming up to you and they want you to be their wedding officiant. What is the usual process that you uh, take them through from meeting them for the first time to then uh, saying goodbye after you uh, married them? So what happens is, is if I'm working out of a chapel, I usually show up about a half an hour beforehand. I get to meet the couple maybe 15 minutes beforehand and I'll chat with them. I look at their paperwork. I make sure I have the cop, the paperwork that I need in order to perform the ceremony. Mm -hmm. I will double check it with them. I'll talk to them about why they have chosen this particular day to get married, how they met. And, you know, where they met, that type of thing, so I can incorporate in their ceremony. From there, with most chapels, then we perform the ceremony. It's about 10 to 12 minutes. After I finish, then I go in. We usually have a witness or two that signs the paperwork. You don't have to have two, but you can have up to two. Mm -hmm. From that point in time is then I will chat with the couple and explain to them what happens with the paperwork. They get the keepsake copy. They get to keep it. Then I take a copy, uh, one copy that needs to be recorded with the clerk's office, so it's officially recorded. And just like a house, you know, a deed or a will or whatever trust. And then um, one piece of paper stays with myself. From there, the couple then could go online and order all their certified copies. Because again, they're just taking the keepsake one. The one that I take is the one that they get to actually keep. I, okay. they have to, excuse me, not keep, I have to record that one. So when they do, they can go online. We have 10 days, not business days, mm. 10 days to get that recorded. All so. right. And um, then, so I would presume though, when a couple reaches out for the first time, um, you already try to get some information from them about who they are, or do you like literally uh, make up the speech half an hour before you marry them? Well, usually, you know, I'm, it depends. The cap, Most chapels, if you're working out of a chapel, you don't get to meet the couple beforehand. If oh, you're okay. doing a private wedding, yes, you sometimes, I'll meet on Zoom or I used to meet in person if they lived here. We would set up a meeting. We would talk a little bit about how they met, again, the same process and what what's going on as far as is there a bridal party? Is the bride being presented? Uh, you know, that who's holding the rings? Are you writing your own vows? Are you going to use my vows? So there's a few things that go into that, yes. Okay, all right. And then in, so since this is a show about uh, side hustles, um, what would you say, like how many weddings can you perform if it is your side hustle. So if you still have a full-time job on the side, how plausible is it? And uh, what would you say is like a time requirement if you want to do this as a side hustle? So depending upon where you live and your actual um, structure with your profession. So let's say you're looking to start a side hustle. 
first of all, it's a great side hustle. So, I mean, let's start with your, you're involved in that magical moment in somebody in a couple's lives. I mean, it's, and there you are, you're giving words of love and wisdom and, you know, you're making them feel good. It's the, traje- it's the trajectory for the rest of their lives. So it's a great yeah. feel good profession and it can be rewarding. So for example, in Nevada, in where I work, and you have to remember, this is a part time for me. And I managed to do over a thousand weddings a year, but it's Las Vegas. Okay. So I, I have a couple of chapels that feed me quite a bit of business. So I'm okay. like one of their top ministers and that makes a difference. However, throughout the country and the world. Okay. And actually we we're paid less per wedding ceremony because it is a little different. But other parts of the world, for example, I had a, I had interviewed an officiant in New York. They get $2,000 a wedding. So if they do one wow. or two weddings on the weekend and they do it two or three times a month, that's a fabulous side hustle. So it depends upon the, the time you have. And I don't, this is the type of career. If you have young children, it's a little difficult because this is a weekend career. I'm not going to mm-hmm. kick. Although smart, if you're smart enough and you're doing a little advertising, meaning, you know, getting out on social media, you can also say, Hey, I have special rates Monday through Thursday after a certain time where I can marry yeah. you. So there are so many ways you can work around that depending upon your schedule with your main, you know, profession, what's bringing in you most of your income. But this is a great profession because you can stop and start this at any time. You know, it's something once you learn it. Once you feel it, it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter where you live. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about that, actually. So from what I've learned, you made a big career change, actually. So this is not something that you have been doing all your life. I came across that you have done a car rental uh, business before that. And um, then, yeah, your big passion you found out is uh, love. So Tell me a little bit more about that uh, car rental experience and also maybe what kind of skills were you able to take over from having had that different um, career before you became a wedding officiant? Well, I kind of uh, grew up in the car rental industry. I came to Las Vegas. It was my first job here. And then I met my late husband at the time. So we opened up a car rental company. And, you know, I I learned through actual experience. So, you know, working from being a rental agent and then, of course, managing and then owning and then getting involved in hiring processes and getting credit lines. So I, you know, for for almost 40 years, I was in that industry. So I have gleaned a lot of experience that I was able to bring over to my business. And really the biggest thing, and what's a little different than when you're running a company and you're you're dealing with a lot of people, you have to make decisions, right? You have to make decisions that really benefit everybody. And you have, you have your uh, customers because you're putting them in in vehicles. You have to make sure that they're properly working. So it's a big responsibility. At what in the on the wedding side, you need to have a little bit more empathy. You need to have a little bit more compassion. It's a little you're, you're again you're walking into a couple on one of the happiest days of their lives. But one of the things they're looking for is a great experience and great customer service, and those are two things that you always need to to think about. And I have been around officiants that don't give the great best customer service. They tell Mm -hmm. couples, this is what they're going to do, and that's it. And I'm flabbergasted. So my skills as being able to communicate and also how to be able to deal with people, those are the skills that you need to bring to the table. And that's what definitely makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, that uh, makes complete sense. I guess both in the end are a service that you provide to someone. And so, uh, yeah, that's where you need to have a certain level of communication in order to make that customer happy. Right. Um, and what other characteristics would you say are crucial uh, besides communication, for example, to be a successful or definitely above average wedding officiant? 
Well, you need to be present. I think that's the biggest thing is you need mm-hmm. to really be able to pick up little things about the couple that you can incorporate in the ceremony. But you also need to be comfortable. What's great about this p- profession is being able to get up in front of people, guests. You can have one. You can have 100. You can have 200. You can have 1,000. It just depends. Also getting familiar with how to use a microphone. Um, how to be familiar working with other members of the wedding team, knowing when to uh, move out of the way when the couple is, you know, you're pronouncing them and it's their first kiss, maybe when they're exchanging the rings, knowing the format of a ceremony to know when everybody stands, when one partner walks in, when a bride or a partner is being presented. So you need those skill sets and also being able to marry couples, same gender couples. That's important. Mm -hmm. Non-binary couples. So it's a matter of understanding the verbiage. There's a lot that goes into it. And that's why I created a course on how to do that, because there are so many different components. You think, oh, you can get up in 10 minutes, it's done. It really isn't done. Because if you don't do it right, you cannot have the guests come back, the videographer come back, and the photographer come back as well as the couple if you omit something. So that's why it's crucial to do this right. For sure. So many questions. So first of all, um, you were just going a little bit through the process of getting that couple married. So is there something that you do that you would say this is unique and that uh, really always makes the couple very happy in comparison to other wedding officiants? Well, you know, I think the ability to make them feel comfortable because they're usually very nervous, even though they they plan, they plan for this. It's like, oh, my gosh. And they get I there. can imagine. And, you know, I just tell them and I'll, I'll tell them when they walk down the aisle and after I maybe do a blessing, I'll say, so how do you feel? And they'll say nervous and I'll say, don't be nervous. I'm the one that's nervous. It's the first time marrying you for me. So, you know, they yeah. want to get them at ease. And once you get them to laugh and you get others, it just draws people in. And that's the key thing is making people want to be seen and they want to be heard and they want to know that you mm-hmm. are acknowledge them. And that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, and so I, I totally love this because now this is something very interesting that I've learned when we had the introduction call that you're actually an introvert. So, um, yeah, well, and yeah, at times, yeah, <laughs> yeah but at yeah. times. Okay. Yeah. Um, but partially. And, um, what tips do you have? Because as an introvert, uh, as someone, so I would not connect a public speaking kind of job let's say, as a first choice for someone who is an introvert. So what kind of tactics or so that you maybe use to overcome that? Or what can you also give as a tip for someone who says, yeah, maybe I actually really find a wedding officiant or any other job that requires, for example, a uh, um an action that is more related to talking with a lot of people, but you have a characteristic where you think, oh, I think that actually doesn't really fit. So what are some tips on how someone could overcome that or evaluate maybe even? Is this something that where I want to jump over um, this barrier that I have? Or should I maybe because of that not even try it? Good question. Well, first of all, misnomer, just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you can't speak publicly. Some of the yeah, best speakers in the world, the best speakers in the world are introverts. They're not extroverts. Some of our presidents. So yeah. what it is when we say extrovert, it means that I don't mind getting out there. I don't mind getting out there and speaking, but when, when I'm ready to relax and I want to get into my own little cocoon, go home, whatever it is, relax. And that's the difference, understanding that. I don't always have to be on. And that's the difference between an introvert and extrovert. And I think with this skill, what's beautiful about it is if you are the type of person, put aside introvert, extrovert. If you like being around people and couples and be able to provide them with words of wisdom, okay? And the the words you say have a life to that Mm -hmm. couple the rest of their lives. So for example, I got an email the other day from a bride that I married 2015. Okay. So that's eight years ago. Well, yeah. She reached out to me. She goes, Maria, my name is Teresa. You don't remember me. You married my wife and I, um, Dawn is her name. And I only remember this from the email Mm -hmm. Uh, eight years ago. And we're coming to Vegas and I 
I thought, I'm thinking, oh, they want me to do a vow renewal. She says, and we'd like to meet with you because we want to give you a tip. I said, a tip? I said to myself, she goes, and I, I emailed her back. I said, that's not necessary. But what I'd like is, could you give me a great review? Right? Mm-hmm. Reviews are important. Yeah. And she wrote back, she goes, of course we will. But we want to tell you the reason we want to meet you and still give you something is you made us feel so comfortable. We were so nervous. Mm-hmm. And we wa- we wanted to come back and actually thank you. What you said made a difference in our lives. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't know. Remember what I said, to be very honest. But you know what? When you hear something like that, that's the gift. So whether you're afraid to get up and speak or, you, or you're thinking about getting up and speaking, imagine impacting somebody, a couple like that. Yeah, That's the gift. And you know what? You What's great is you can have a script in front of you Mm -hmm. if you want to. I don't use a script anymore unless somebody insists that they want something so outlandish. And But the point is, is you become so comfortable that it becomes automatic. So you really, it's just a matter of getting comfortable, not working. Once you get out of your own head, it's not about you. It's about the couple. And once you do and focus on the couple, you're going to, you'll be fine. Mm Mm-hmm. So with with practice, there comes the security then, Absolutely. I guess. Absolutely. It took me a few years. It's not like I said, oh, I'm going to do this and now I'm going to memorize. No, it took me several years to get there. Mm-hmm. And actually, if you would, I mean, yeah, it's never possible, but with the knowledge that you have today, if you would need to uh, start over, what would be the first steps uh, that you would take? Well, when I started, First of all, I started, there wasn't, I was looking for somebody to coach and teach me and I Mm -hmm. couldn't find anybody. Nowadays, there's a couple of people out there that do what I do and they teach officiating. So I would definitely hire somebody. And the reason I would is it's somebody's wedding day. And there are certain things you need and rituals that you need to know when somebody says, I want to do a jumping at the broom. I want to do a hand fasting ceremony. I want to uh, break the glass. You know, they're just different things. Yeah. The, the lasso. So I would definitely take my time and spend a bit of money, which I was willing to. I couldn't find anyone. Like I said, now, yeah. nowadays, there's a, several people that do what I do teach. And I would find that person. And then I also, I would work very heavily on social media and getting out there and promoting yourself and not just with the wedding venues and wedding industry people, but also in the business industry as well, because getting on LinkedIn, for example, just getting familiar with that people need to, Oh, I know who she is. Like people say to me, Oh, I remember your company name, but I forget your name. You're the love girl. Right. So that's <laughs> yeah, that's okay. right. And that's how you build up. That's what I would do. And it what again, We've evolved over the last 13 years in Vegas. We actually have a wedding chamber. I mean, very few, you know, I yeah, don't know if anyone else where else we have one. So that makes a difference. For sure. And you really find somebody to coach you. It just makes it you because you want their long journey to be your shortcut so you can be successful. Yeah. The I had listened to a podcast. Uh, actually, I think it was just last week where this uh, guest was also just highlighting so heavily on it's not about how you start, but it's about finding someone, the who, that can help you get started, which will actually accelerate everything. And actually, so you are the who for quite a few people because you do have that course today and you do enable others to select you as their who so what are actually success stories from those mentees that you've had uh where you say this is something that i'm actually really really proud of so i have a few people that i have been i'm mentoring and they're doing very well as a matter of fact i send them business that's how well i enjoy them so i have to say there's been several And um, there are women and some men. I'm not going to say there isn't. And then, you know, the thing is with my course, I have a couple of different ways you can take it. People just download it and go through the videos and the workbook Mm -hmm. and I don't get to meet them. So there's several people that have just sent me notes that said they found it very valuable and that's what's important. And then, of course, I only do live coaching several times a year. And that's the difference. And those most of those people uh, have been in Las Vegas. Okay. And, and now, any yeah. any uh, story that they came back with where they were like, 
this is such a special wedding that I was just able to do. And this was all just because of you. Anything well, absolutely. out of the ordinary? Back, they always come back and tell me, my gosh, it made all the difference. I'm glad I chatted with you. And I'm always accessible to anybody that takes my course if they have a question to email me or if they have my number to call me direct because I, one of them had a hand fasting ceremony. So I sent, I found a video that helped. She goes, Oh my God, thank you. I'm so glad. So, you know, you're, yeah. you're there, you're, you're their mentor. You, you just want to be there. You want them to succeed because their success is your success. That's how I feel. Yeah. Fantastic. And actually before you were mentioning that uh, you were uh, marrying to women. So I had uh, listened to another interview of yours where you shared that actually this is how you broke into the industry by going against the grain and doing something that was unusual for back then. And oftentimes when you want to start something, you actually want to look for that niche in order to have a little bit of an advantage and maybe even present yourself as a specialist for something that not a lot of people do. So what tips do you have in how people can actually find those niches in order to have a little bit easier way to get started? Well, you know, you have to do several different types of ceremonies. And, you know, when I started in the industry, same gender, uh, marriages would not recognize they weren't legal mm -hmm. so that was in 20, 2010 and then of course they became legal in 15 and that's why we have so many people coming to las vegas so because and i'm a woman okay there were more men was very staunch mm -hmm. and that's why the chapels hired me she'll do the commitment ceremony and actually i work i relate well to women and i relate well to men so especially gay men, because they, they, oh, this is a woman. So we, you know, so it makes them feel a little bit more comfortable and women relate to women. Yeah. So I understand that. But um, with the niche, that was not my niche because my niche is really being able to be flexible to perform different types of ceremonies for different couples that, I mean, I am not the type of person that's going to go jump out of an airplane with you because that's what some people do, right? <laughs> I do well, that. Gonna yeah. you. It's not going to happen with me. So you have to think about, but I have one gal that I mentored that does a lot of more cultural weddings within, mm -hmm. uh, she's black. So she, and she specializes in more the uh, traditions that may be from Africa, the jumping in the broom and other rituals. So those are the type of things. Maybe you're Indian. Uh, I spoke to a girl yesterday, which I don't know anyone. I'm going to perform her wedding ceremony next year. Her and her, her uh, fiance. Did I know anybody that spoke Vietnamese? And I said, no, but you know, so you need to, if you have a second language, that's what you can work on as well. Some people mm -hmm. like, to, they like to entertain. So there are people that are like Elvis impersonators, Michael Jackson impersonators. So you can do that. So when you find, when you get comfortable, then you can practice on what your niche is. Yeah. So I guess then it's important to reflect a little bit on your path or something right. that you already have, which is special. And so that can then help you figure out um, that that niche. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a question here. So the industry when you started was male dominated, you just mentioned. Yeah. So what were maybe some challenges that you were facing today? And since the industry has also changed what other challenges how, or how have the challenges changed um, today and what do people need to be aware of when they are starting today? Well, years ago, yes. I mean, it was more male dominated. And I and there were times when I would be booked for a wedding through a chapel and then they would call and say, oh, Maria, they really want a, a, a male minister. They thought your name was Mario. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, not a, I'm definitely female. So oh, gosh. Oh. But I, you know what? And if somebody is comfortable, and I walked into a wedding ceremony at a chapel uh, several few years ago, and the, the woman said, "Oh my God, I was supposed to have a male minister, and I was the only one on at night that night with mm -hmm. the coordinator." I said, "Listen, I said I'm not a male, obviously. I said I'm female. I said so you and your husband to be. Uh, there is nobody on that can perform it. You can change it to tomorrow, you're, but you're already dressed. You got your hair and makeup done, or." We and you didn't. There's nothing in the notes that says special request because they would have done that. Or we can perform the wedding ceremony. So I did. She hugged yeah. me later on and thanked me. She goes, "It was the best ceremony I never thought." See, sometimes there's this perception, but that still happens today 
Francie. So it's not like it doesn't mm-hmm. happen. The challenges, and I think the challenges too, because we are um, more open, we're doing more wedding ceremonies with, let's say, same gender, but also transgendering. Okay. Mm-hmm. Those are challenges because I'll never forget somebody told me a story. They walked in to a bridal room and there was clearly a bride that was a man dressed up, had a beard and the the photographer went, oh, you know, and that really wasn't the right thing to do. So the Mm -hmm. challenges are not to react, to treat people no matter what you might think or who they are and to be able to ask them and not be afraid say, okay, uh, what would you like? How would you like me to refer to you? Would you like me to refer to you as a bride or wife, or would you like to, you know? So you know that's a big think about that mm-hmm. question you're asking. It's like asking somebody, "Are you pregnant?" And then they're not, right? <laughs> right? When you have to think. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be gingerly. You have to be able to. Add. We see more of that because Vegas is a lot more accepting and open. So that's how we get the opportunity to perform all these different types of ceremonies, and it just yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and that nice is you need to just be compassionate, open minded, and not react. So, if somebody says to mm-hmm. you, "Well, we just met ten days ago," you just keep a face on. It's, you're there. They're in love. They're in love. That moment, they are in love. They are ready to commit to each other, and no judgment. And that's the key thing. Mm-hmm. And so, if there are like these, let's say, more bizarre situations, uh, is there ever a time where you say, "Okay"? I won't marry you. And for what kind of reason would you then draw a line or maybe well, say you guys should rethink this or something like that? Well, you don't say, or do you do ever something like this? Well, you don't tell them to rethink. That's not what we're there for. We're not a counselor. Yeah. We're not a coach. We are an officiant. Yeah. However, if they're impaired physically, you know, meaning they're impaired, um, not physically, but they maybe drink a little too much. Maybe they, you know, cannabis mm-hmm. is illegal. Maybe they've smoked a little too much. Or maybe they're having a medical episode. You know, sometimes the sugar levels go up and down and you just tell them, you know, maybe we should postpone it till you feel a little better. Because technically, if they are, let's say they're over the legal limit for drinking, which I wouldn't know, but you can kind of tell when if they're falling down drunk, you know, tell them, listen, I can't marry you under these circumstances. Yeah. Something as far as my license says, you have to be coherent. Somebody I called me and asked me, could you perform a wedding ceremony? The, the gentleman's on a ventilator. I said, you know... I, you know, it's different if they were not able to speak and, you know, they're mute, but they can write it out, right? But when you're on a ventilator and you're not coherent, I can't can marry you to somebody mm-hmm. else legally. So those are the circumstances you need to be aware of. Mm-hmm. So then with everything that you've just shared, there's a lot of empathy that needs to go into um, marrying people. Um What other skills would you say you have built throughout the last decade of of doing that job? Or what is maybe even something where you're still working on improving today that 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 wedding officiant job allows you to, yeah, improve and create? Well, obviously, empathy, compassion, being non-judgmental. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that brings you brings you about more peace. So this is what all this brings is then you're able to really appreciate the love in your life and giving love in your life. So when you're in that world, you're actually walking the talk. And Mm -hmm. that's different. You're not talking. You're actually walking the talk and feeling it. And that's what I have to say is probably the best thing. Fantastic. And what was one of your most unique uh, wedding ceremonies uh, that you have done? I guess there's a lot of crazy and different weddings that some people yeah, probably no, can't my, even imagine my, i don't there isn't anything like unique other than i had a bride dressed up in a they went their first date was um jurassic park so they both were dressed in these big inflated <laughs> well mm-hmm. costumes. like that was probably the most unique that i will say super interesting and how talking about also um new different ways um uh, yeah, dressing up or, um, yeah, trying to make it unique. How do you think the wedding officiant industry will also change within the next years? Also, considering, for example, that let's say there is a climate crisis, are people, for example, becoming much more um, careful about how much, let's say, they're wasting? Or is there even like such a thing as a 
AI wedding officiant or something like that? Like, where do you think that whole industry is uh, going uh, into the future and how is it uh, changing? Well, AI is definitely changing because AI is making it easier if you're looking to tailor a ceremony for a couple. And I think what it does is anybody that's doing content writing, so there are people you can hire to help you write your vows if that's what you choose to do, mm -hmm. aside from an officiant or an officiant charging more money for that. With AI, you know, but, and the thing is, AI definitely is making that a lot easier. And You know, AI is only seven, eight months old. It's not like it's been out there forever. People don't realize that. Oh, just, yeah, ChatGPT, yeah. for sure, yeah. Right, ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. but, but of course, there's been other AI type of concepts that we've been using. So I think that um, that's one area that could be minimized. But also, uh, and it actually for as a wedding officiant for myself, when I want to write a blog about something, when I need to prepare for something, I love chat GPT. So I think any way that I can save time, definitely. Now on the side of marrying couples, that's an interesting point because there is a one comp one company in Utah that's marrying couples over Zoom. So let's say you're, you live here, right? And then your partner lives in Ireland. Scotland, they oh, can do that, okay. which, which we're still, I, we don't know if that's really legal yet. So when you really think about it, um, you're getting married and you're putting together assets, right? And you're building a family. So there's a legality here. And, you know, it says to the world, at least in the United States, you know what, we're pooling our resources. We want to live together. We want to buy things together. So you're blending your credit, right? You're building mm -hmm. your, um, incomes together. And if something happens, whether you divorce, widowed, widower, then you now have a division of the ass. So that's where that where you need that piece of paper. Now, as far as not having them there, you know, I don't see, I don't see it happening now, but you know, in the future, it could, you could be marrying somebody from one planet on another. I don't know. <laughs> you have to just look at what's the future going to bring. Yeah. Interesting. And is there then with those kinds of changes, um, how are you adapting to, yeah, when you, for example, see that people are being married across the country, are you trying to, yeah, hop on any trends right now or, um, you just see where, where it's well, taking you? So let's stop right here for a second. So the marrying like that one company is doing, that really isn't going to be a trend. That's going to probably be squashed. Okay. In okay. Nevada, which is where my license is, so I legally can marry people in the state, you have to be in front of me. I have okay. to know that you're coherent, and I have to know it's both of you. Okay, so that's the difference. I key, and that's the key thing. Even though you can have documents sent on this other company's doing it, there's still, you're talking about somebody that might be from out of the country that now wants to come into the country. So there's an immigration issue there. So I don't yeah. see this happening, at least in our state and other countries as well. We're not the only one. So that I don't see happening in that trend. I just think the biggest trend is you need to be flexible. Like I use Zoom. So for example, we have many couples that get married and they have guests on Zoom and I incorporate them. I have them help me pronounce the couple. I'll say, mm -hmm. unmute your mics. Help me pronounce them husband and wife, you know, people like that. So I think a officiant needs to be on trend with the different technology that's going on and on trend with AI as well to help mm -hmm. the chat GPT to help. So they save time. And, and again, it's not, you, you take that chat GPT, you double check it, and then you make it your own. You add your own flavor, your own niche, the, what, the words that you use. And that's how I think you need to be moving forward. Mm -hmm. And how does that, for example, also affect um, getting the wedding officiant uh, jobs? So if specifically, if I'm at the beginning now, is there anything that you say, oh, yeah, this is something that people are starting to do and that's where I could maybe jump on a bandwagon early in order to get my foot into the industry potentially quicker? No, I think that, um, you know, there just to be to just to, to go out and market yourself to different venues that you know where they're doing wedding ceremonies and also letting other people know in the business world, letting your friends and family know. And I think that's the key thing. There isn't anything that is going to change. You know, you just have to be willing, open, and making sure you understand how a ceremony format is, which is a whole part of my course. 
understanding yeah. that, understanding the processional, the recessional, understanding rituals and those things so that you're familiar. And if not, look, go look it up. That's why we have YouTube and Google and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. So prepare very well, and right. then you can get out into the world, and then you should be able to be successful. So, which, by the way, very soon I have to jump off because I've got six wedding ceremonies to go do. <laughs> wow, fantastic. That was actually my last question. Uh, so we just managed this perfectly. I, Since you're my very first interview, actually, I want to start off a tradition, which is that the person from the previous interview, not knowing who the next one is, is asking them a question. So this person is also going to be someone who does a job either full time or as a side hustle that is a side hustle. So what question will we give to the next guest? So with this, if you're looking for this great side hustle and you found it, my question is, what made you gravitate towards that particular side hustle? What and why? And what will be your answer if you would need to summarize it quickly before you need to run well, on that question? Well, the reason I did is, is I love being around love and I wanted to be in an industry where it was a little less stressful. Okay, well, sometimes it can't be stressful, but the point is. And I, and I love being around people that are happy because that's who I am. Fantastic. Well, I think this is the perfect way to end this interview. So Thank you so, so much. And also sending out those last words on love and happiness. I think that's really what everyone is craving for. So thank you so much for sharing your story and teaching us all on side hustles and being a wedding officiant. I appreciate it so much. You take care, friends. It's a pleasure speaking to you. Go out, make this the best day ever or get a good night's sleep, right? Because <laughs> you're turning into <laughs> Bye, everybody. Right. Thank you so much. Send me your recording. <laughs> Thank you. We'll do. Perfect.